Things are heating up in the more budget-friendly segment of the CPU market. Well, I say budget-friendly with trepidation as the circa £400 and lower mid-range section is still pricey. Now though, we have the new Zen 4 AMD Ryzen 5 7600X that we will be looking at today. And it has tough competition from the slightly more expensive Intel Core i5 13600K Raptor Lake competitor. Plus, there are the old AMD Ryzen 5000 and Intel 12th Gen Core chips to deal with. So, let's jump into this review and see how the new 6-core, £320 AMD Ryzen 5 7600X performs against the previous generation competitors, as well as the new Core i5 13600K that Leo has reviewed and given us test data for. We've already taken a good look at the Zen 4 architecture, the Ryzen 7000 series processors and the AM5 platform in our launch review. So make sure you check out the video content and the written KitGuru webpage for the Ryzen 9, uh, was it 7950X and the Ryzen 7 7700X. Complete brain blank there for a second. It's also worth checking out our recent B650 motherboard review. That's an MSI board because realistically that's the chipset of motherboard that you're probably going to be partnering with this Ryzen 5 processor. With that introduction done though, let's take a closer look at some of the core specifications for the new Ryzen 5 on Zen 4. AMD's Ryzen 5 7600X has 6 cores and 12 threads. It's got 38 megabytes of cache, 32 megabytes of which is level 3. Base clock of the new TSMC 5 nanometer fab chip is listed at 4.7 gigahertz. A maximum boost clock is 5.3 gigahertz. The 7600X's TDP is 105 watts, just like its Ryzen 7 sibling. And there's no boxed cooler, which is arguably sensible for use with AMD's Precision Boost 2 algorithm. But at this market segment, we can also see an argument for including a heatsink, even if it is on the budget end of the spectrum. I guess I'll put that one to you, the audience. Let us know what you think about that in the comment section down below. There is the integrated RDNA 2 iGPU with actually decent performance capabilities and solid media consumption support. And in the UK, the Ryzen 5 7600X is around 320 to 330 pounds. That puts it around 50 to 60 pounds cheaper than Intel's Core i5 13600K competitor and around 100 pounds below the Ryzen 7 7700X. There is, however, notable competition from Intel's last-gen Core i5 12600K and the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. Both of those chips are a little cheaper than the new Ryzen 5. Plus, they can both run on considerably cheaper DDR4 platforms, which is worth bearing in mind. For testing of the Ryzen 5 7600X, we are running our typical test platform for AM5. Of course, we've got AM4 and Intel's LGA 1700 competition, so 12th gen and 13th gen for Intel, and then Ryzen 5000 for AM4. Both DDR5 platforms use 32 gigabyte, 6000 megahertz sets from G-Skills Trident Z5 range, though the timings differ slightly with the AMD Expo kit run at 30, 38, 38, 96, versus the Intel XMP set at 36, 36, 36, 96. But this is pretty close between the two sets. The new AMD processors are tested on Gigabyte's X670E Aorus Master Motherboard featuring the BIOS revision and a GSA profile as supplied and validated by AMD. And looking at the VRM solution including the cooling on this motherboard, yeah, we're not going to have to worry about downclocking on the motherboard side of things, that's for sure. We've enhanced our CPU testing setup to include an AMD Radeon RX 6950 XT graphics card for pixel pushing power. We specifically chose the 6950 XT thanks to its superb performance at 1080p and 1440p resolutions, the former of which is critical for assessing CPU gaming capabilities. And our specific board of choice is the monstrously large and tremendously well-cooled Sapphire Nitro Plus Pure model. We've also enhanced the power supply setup with Seasonic's new 1600 watt Prime models delivering clean and consistent juice. And then rounding it out, all platforms get a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler for cooling on their open air test bench. With regards to test procedures, we're going for our usual approach, so you can check those out in the written page, that's the best place to see all the information there. Gaming is going to be focusing on 1080p because this realistically gives us the best indication of which processor is better than the other without just pushing the onus to the graphics card. And as always, if you have any further questions, then check them in the comment section down below. Let's jump into the test results. Looking at power consumption, 
the 142 watt PPT rated Ryzen 5 7600X actually does very well in the current world of energy sucking PC hardware. 109 watts for a heavy all core load situation is fine and shouldn't present any major cooler headaches. This translates into 5.2 GHz all core in a Cinebench workload. Intel's Core i5-12600K price competitor demands a little more power than AMD's new chip, but the newer and more expensive Core i5-13600K demands a considerably higher level of power draw, unless it is constricted to a 115 watt TDP mode, as tested by Leo. Despite offering relatively modest power draw figures, Zen 4 continues to run very hot in the Ryzen 5 7600X form. A low temperature of 91 degrees Celsius under a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler is very high, but the reality is that AMD is pushing the chip towards its 95 degrees Celsius limit to try to eke out every last drop of frequency. It's not really the actual power draw that is driving the high temperature. That's clear by looking at the higher core count Ryzen 7000 alternatives. Instead, it's the high operating voltage that results in lofty operating temperatures. 91 degrees Celsius is nothing to be concerned by, but it could cause some headaches for managing CPU cooler and chassis fan speeds on motherboards or hardware with less tunable fan control options. Looking at Blender Classroom rendering performance, the Ryzen 5 7600X sits close to its previous generation competitors in terms of numbers, but the new and more expensive Core i5-13600K is much faster. Cinebench R23 NT shows much of the same trend as Blender, though Intel's Core i5-12600K with its similar price to the 7600X and its platform upgradability, yep, yeah, that's probably a superior option here. And once again, the more expensive Core i5-13600K is much faster than AMD's new Ryzen 5. Single thread performance is superb on the new Ryzen 7000 series chips. The Ryzen 5 7600X is no exception there, with highly competitive performance even against the Core i5-13600K. The 7600X is very slightly behind its previous gen Intel and AMD price competitors for Handbrake Hitch 264. Intel's 50 to 60 pound more expensive Core i5-13600K is considerably quicker even in its reduced power mode. H265 video conversion sees the Ryzen 5 put in competitive performance versus the 12600K and Ryzen 7 5800X, but yet again, even the power restricted Core i5-13600K is considerably faster than AMD's newest Ryzen 5. 7-zip is typically a strength for AMD, but there is only so much performance that 12 threads can provide. Here, the new Zen 4 chip's performance sits above the 12600K and below the 5800X, but the 380 pound Core i5-13600K offers significantly higher performance in the three power modes that Leo tested. If you're interested in 3D Mark numbers, the Ryzen 5 7600X is pretty low on this chart, but I would not attach much importance whatsoever to this data unless you're pushing in 3D Mark results records. Borderlands 3 has the Ryzen 5 7600X performing above its priced competitors from the previous generation, but slightly below the Core i5-13600K. Nevertheless, 142 FPS average and 1% lows in triple digits are good results. Far Cry 6 shows a wider spread in favour of the Intel chips and higher-end AMD parts. The Ryzen 5 7600X is a little slower than the 12600K and a lot quicker than the Ryzen 7 5800X, but compared to the Core i5-13600K, Intel has a very healthy lead. Despite not working properly on our AM4 test system, we still include some data for Hitman 3. The lack of AM4 test data forces the Ryzen 5 7600X to the bottom of our performance chart, but the reality is that 166 FPS average figure will be absolutely fine for the vast majority of gamers, even if the 13600K from Leo's review is considerably faster. Shadow of the Tomb Raider plays very well on Zen 4, particularly when compared to Intel 12th Gen and Ryzen 5000 competitors. The 13600K is only slightly quicker here, so AMD's Ryzen 5 7600X does well. Watch Dogs Legion is a somewhat rare victory for the Ryzen 5 7600X, with AMD's new chip outperforming the Intel Core i5 13600K, the 12600K and the 5800X by slim margins. When looking at 1080p gaming results for the Ryzen 5 7600X, it looks to be perfectly good in isolation and actually very strong against the previous generation competition, so the likes of the Ryzen 7 5800X and the Intel Core i5-12600K. But when we compare it to arguably the real competitor, that is Intel's current gen Core i5-13600K, the Ryzen 5 7600X doesn't look quite as strong here, even if it is 50 to 60 pounds cheaper on the UK market currently. 
AMD's Precision Boost 2 algorithm maintains lofty, lightly threaded boost clocks and continues to be my favoured way to overclock AMD processors. This time we tried out Curve Optimizer using Ryzen Master, and that's because Precision Boost Overdrive was basically useless. Curve Optimizer worked well and delivered an almost 200MHz boost to the all-core operating frequency for our Ryzen 5 7600X sample. The key driver for allowing our chip to run at almost 5.4GHz all-core was the reduction in operating voltage. Lower voltage resulted in lower operating temperatures and lower power draw, whilst also delivering almost 200MHz higher clock speeds. This is a good overclocking outcome in my opinion, particularly as it is so easy to do through Ryzen Master. There's also the 88W PPT Eco mode that can be easily applied through AMD's Ryzen Master software, and this delivered a quick reduction in power consumption and thermals versus the stock Ryzen 5 7600X. Overclocking via Curve Optimizer and 88W PPT Eco mode are both good ways to run the Ryzen 5 7600X that improve its overall balance. At 88 watts, the 12 thread chip loses very little performance but drops power and thermals considerably. Curve Optimizer overclocking is positive too, and clearly a better way to run the CPU than stock conditions. However, both of those scenarios still put the Ryzen 5 7600X well behind the performance of Intel's Core i5-13600K, even when that chip is restricted to 115 watts of power. Looking at the Cinebench performance per watt numbers as a guide for the operating and productivity performance efficiency of each processor, Ryzen 5 7600X is pretty poor out of the box. This is by virtue of the default voltage that results in relatively high power draw for its performance level. The tuning modes of Eco and Curve Optimizer are both far better thanks to their more sensible operating voltages that rein in power consumption. Intel's Core i5-13600K operating in its 115 watt mode is still considerably more efficient though. Ryzen 5 7600X is an interesting one to analyse. In isolation, the processor looks pretty reasonable. It generally trades blows with its price competitors from AMD's and Intel's previous generation parts, but it does so while offering a moderately priced £320 route onto the feature-rich AM5 platform. Gaming performance is solid too, most people are realistically not going to own graphics cards that will push this chip to its limits, so that's absolutely fine. The real headache for AMD though comes in the form of Intel's Core i5-13600K processor. While this 20-thread chip is indeed more expensive by around about 50 to 60 pounds, it more than justifies that price increase in productivity-based performance, which fundamentally just stomps the Ryzen 5. And even gamers with GPUs fast enough to push really high frame rates at 1080p or maybe 1440p are probably going to be impressed by the slight performance increase offered by the Core i5 chip. So that's something else to bear in mind. Of course, as we've already mentioned, AMD's Ryzen 5 7600X runs on the new AM5 platform. AM5 is very feature rich and has a healthy selection of truly competitive X series and B series motherboards. But it's also a very expensive platform right now, with the cheapest B650 motherboards tending to sell for around £200 or more like £230 for good starting points. The Core i5-13600K's cheapest DDR5 motherboards tend to be only marginally less expensive than AM5. Importantly though, Intel's chip should run just fine in even sub £160 B660 motherboards alongside cheaper DDR4 memory. That's helpful in offsetting the Core i5's higher purchase cost versus Ryzen 5 7600X. And the former point regarding memory is particularly true if you already have a kit of DDR4 that you're happy to run for a little bit longer. I can't say that I'm particularly impressed by the Ryzen 5 7600X's stock running conditions in our particular test scenario. A high-end X670E motherboard and 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler still resulted in over 100 watts of power draw and temperatures beyond 90 degrees Celsius. These points are fine in isolation, but the Ryzen 5 doesn't really offer the performance levels to justifiably back them up. Eco mode and curve optimizer overclocking are really good ways to run the Ryzen 5 7600X though. Perhaps AMD would have been better to apply some of the dynamics here out of the box. They both resulted in lower power consumption, greatly reduced temperatures, and very similar performance to the stock configuration. Perhaps that highlights the niche that AMD's Ryzen 5 7600X currently serves, small form factor systems where cooling performance is certainly at a premium alongside space. Overall, I think that the Ryzen 5 7600X has a tough fight in the market to convince users 
that it is a smarter option than the old chips it is priced against or the new Core i5-13600K that can often be just as cheap a setup due to more affordable motherboards and DDR4 memory support. I can certainly see the Ryzen 5's appeal to somebody who is adamant on going down the DDR5 route and keeping their AM5 motherboard for many years of worth of upgrades. Buying relevant memory and a decent motherboard from day one proved to be an excellent formula that served early AM4 adopters really well. In essence, AMD's promised support for the AM5 platform beyond 2025 could indeed be a big factor that sways a potential purchase decision, especially as Ryzen 7000 3D vCache processor upgrades are likely coming and should be excellent gaming chips. I can also see the argument for users wanting the lower power Ryzen 5 versus Intel's pretty hefty Core i5-13600K competitor, but Intel's chip does more than enough to justify its higher power draw with significantly better productivity performance, so that really does need to be bared in mind. Overall, I think the lack of truly affordable B650 or other AM5 motherboards really is a headache for the Ryzen 5 7600X to new builders. That, coupled with the competing Intel platform's ability to run with low-cost DDR4 memory, means that I think Ryzen 5 7600X probably needs a price drop to compensate for the expensive motherboards and costly DDR5 memory. I've been Luke Hilfikikaru. Thank you for watching our video review of the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X processor. As always, put your feedback in the comment section down below. Really interested to have a sound off debate with you down there. If you like this video, do all our usual YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, follow the channel. Please do check out the main written review on the Kikaru webpage. That supports us massively. Uh, interact with us on Twitter, Discord, and other social media. And I will catch you in the next one.